make this happen. Okay, um, thank you, Fred. And by all means, um, as we go through this, uh, please feel free to ask questions uh, at, at any time. Um, just un unmute yourself and, and uh, feel free to ask those questions. So today, what we're going to go over are two reports that are available through DHIA. Um, they can be requested uh, on test day. You can also request these to come just out quarterly or, or annually or every test day. Um, as a consultant, um, we do have a function on our website called Reports on Demand. So if any consultant wants to pull these reports off that the producer maybe is not currently getting, they can go ahead and, and request those as well. Or if a producer just wants to try them out, feel free to give us a call and, and we can go ahead and generate them. So the first one is what we call the um, Transition Cow Management Report. So on this re report, um, there are several management factors or monitors that we look at. We look at the dry periods, the first milk, the fat and protein ratio, utter health, days of first breeding, the survival, and then the stress or the, um, the, any, the different stress factors that may be happening during the transition time period. So what we call the transition period is from the dry date to 40 days after calving. So that's the time frame that we want to look at. So um, if you're using this report, that's why it's fairly critical to make sure that you do uh, test on a regular basis every 30 days, um, because uh, a cow, if you happen to test, let's say every two months, every 60 days, um, there are a group of those cows that may have calved 45, 50 days ago, and this is their first test that aren't gonna be included in this report, because we only look at those that go from dry date to 40 days after calving. So the report um, assesses the information by calving period. Each period includes all cows that have calved during that, that time frame. So in order to make more appropriate conclusions and management decisions, the size of the calving period is determined by the average number of calvings per month in the past year. So as we go into the report, you'll see how this really shows up. So monthly, if you have 40 or more calvings um, a month, bi-monthly, 20 to 39 calvings, and quarterly, less than 20 calvings. Um, and so this just kind of groups those calving uh, together in order so you don't have spikes because you only have one animal in that graph. Um, so we're, we're grouping those animals together. A 100 point scale indicates the level of success and goals can be set by the success of the top 10% of the herds with similar size. So this is what we call our, our first page on our report, our overview. So we're showing each of the seven monitors on um, our graph. And then we also have a purple line, which shows where the top 10% of the herds are, are matching up with it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so you wanna determine which monitors in the herd are working well for you and which areas has an opportunity for improvement. So if we happen to look at this particular herd, um, we're seeing for the most part, this herd is doing really well compared to the top 10%. One area that may be looking at uh, right now on their last test is the fat protein ratios for those first lactation animals um, aren't quite up where they could be or should be. So you may wanna see if that's a trend or if that was just um, a, an anomaly on this last test. But overall, everything else, um, the herd is doing fairly well um, compared to the top 10% of the herds. So the first section we're gonna look at is dry periods. So we know that um, really short or really long dry periods can reduce the milk production. So on this graph here, we have our calving periods um, grouped out. And as we see here on this herd, 
we are looking at two months because um, based upon the herd size, this herd is um, about a 400 cows. Um, so we're going to be grouping them um, by monthly. So you want to look and see if there's any seasonality um, or if there's any difference between the second lactation cows and older cows. Um, so if we do look at this here, uh, we do see that for a while back, last January um, and March, um, there were some longer dry periods or some abnormal dry periods for the three plus lactation cows. Those have seemed to be leveled off and have improved as a year gone by. Um, but those are kind of things that you wanna be looking at and make sure they don't happen again. Um, down at the bottom, we'll show the percent of dry periods outside of the 30 to 70 day range. And as you can see, we don't have any that are too short, but we do have a, a fair amount as we see that 24% uh, percent of the dry periods were over 70 days in January and February, 31% in March and April, with 3% of those were actually over 120 days. So definitely we did have a problem in March and April, but things just kind of level off after that. Then we wanna look at the first milk. So um, low first milk prior to 40 days generally indicates some transition problems. Um, higher milk prior to 40 days indicate cows will reach their peak milk easier. So you wanna check and see if there's any seasonality any difference between first lactation cows and older cows. And we do have a, some variation, whether they're Hostings or, or Jersey. So a Jersey herd, uh, we obviously don't expect their first milks to be as high as a hosting herd. This is a hosting herd. So we wanna check and see, is there any seasonality, is there any problems? Um, the older cows, second plus lactation cows definitely are not a problem at all. On the first lactation cows, also not a problem. There was a little bit in May and June. Um, there again, don't know if, uh, what had occurred back then, but you just wanna make sure that it doesn't happen again in this May and June. So then looking at the table for the first milks. Greg, can we go yep. back a slide? We're seeing there on the, the January and February second plus lactation cows. That's kind of the lowest they've been in that 12 month series. Is that a start of a trend or something you need to, as a producer, be watching? Yes, so that's, that's where um, uh, I would just kind of look at that. And, um, you know, you, those were cows that calved this last January and February. Um, see last year, so we do just kind of have to see where they were a year ago, and that was not the case. So, so yes, uh, definitely would want to um, check and make sure you've got see how many cows that um, equated to, see if there's any problems now. Um, you know, you can kind of check and see if there are other stress factors on th those groups. Um, we can, can also look and see uh, what the dry periods were. Maybe they had long dry periods. Um, we didn't see that on our previous slides, um, but but yeah, definitely is one. You're still right at that top 10%, but it, it is going the wrong direction. First, first lactation cows are definitely not a problem. They're um, doing re really well. But yes, if you anytime you start seeing a trend right now is where you want to make sure that doesn't uh, continue. Thank you. So, and, and here we do kind of see um, that kind of gives us a little more information. Um, as uh, Fred had, had indicated, uh, we're looking at the breakouts um, by first and second lactation cows. And what is there a higher percentage of cows that are uh, less than 20 or less than 30 pounds on their first test? And here we're looking at that bottom chart uh, for that last period that we just talked about, 14% were less than 20, and also 14% were less than 30 pounds. Um, so we, we are seeing that there are some, some problems with those 
um, younger or with those older cows on this last test. So um, just kind of look and see. And, and maybe it's a case where you've got, um, we do see those 44 cows are in that group. So still a reasonable number um, and kind of see uh, if there's just a couple of cows or, and the rest are okay. And, and maybe drill down a little bit more on those, um, on those lower cows. Um, also, as we mentioned uh, earlier, be aware that a herd with long test periods may show less fresh cows than actually calved in that time period due to only evaluating those cows that calved within the last 40 days. So if you're looking at this and you say, well, I really had um, 50 cows that calved, not 44, but if your test period was 60 days, um, there could be six of those that calved more than 40 days ago. Is it just a cost savings that producers stretch it out to 60 days? I mean, they seem to be losing a, a lot of information by stretching it out. I mean, is there another reason Definitely. they do that? Um, I, I assume it's probably a cost savings. Um, there's so many different uh, possibilities to reduce those, those costs. Um, you know, you can go on a sampler, do it yourself, but larger herds, you know, usually just want to have a technician that comes in, but uh, probably just, mostly I'm assuming is, is cost savings, but, but, but yeah, I always recommend that you test, um, at least every 45 days, um, every month would be uh, ideal. So you can see if there's any seasonality or trends. Once you start stretching that out, um, your lactations just aren't going to be as, as accurate as well as you don't get that information on those first tests that you that are so critical to be able to evaluate transition cows. So. <laughs> our next section is our fat protein ratios. So the um, fat protein ratios of 1.0 to 1.6 indicates that a cow began the lactation eating well with low incidence of metabolic disorders. The fat protein ratios may not indicate whether a fat percent or protein percent is at the improper level. It's just uh, an alert to potential problems. Um, and so that's where we were looking at right now. Uh, you wanna see if there is a consistent problem throughout the year. Um, and if there is, how does this compare to actual health problems in early lactation? Um, are you seeing if you do have a problem with fat protein ratios, are you also seeing a problem with ketosis? Um, you know, just kind of seeing, if, or if this just happens to be our nutrition when the cows just uh, first uh, calve, but really not having any metabolic problems. Um, so here again, just kind of looking to see if there are any trends, any differences on lactation groups. Um, our first lactation cows kind of have a problem with this last test. Just kind of monitor them real close to make sure that they don't um, get into more problems metabolically than, um, than they may be already. Utter health, when we're evaluating the cell count, we're looking at uh, a value of 200,000 uh, on a raw count or 4.0 for a linear score as our threshold to indicate uh, sub subclinical mastitis. A high percentage of an infected cows on the first test generally indicates potential problems in dry cow treatment or in the calving pen. Um, so you wanna see if there's any consistent problem throughout the year. Also kind of see if there's any differences by lactation groups. Um, if you see that uh, first lactation cows don't have a problem at all, the second plus lactation cows do, then that generally would mean that, and if both are calving in the same area, it's not a calving problem, but it may be a dry cow treatment problem. Um, so just kind of check and see if there's any differences by lactations and see if there's any uh, consistency throughout. Greg, can that 200,000 threshold be adjusted in a herd or for herd? Um, that's, you can do some, for this report, no. Um, but if you're looking at uh, 
Um, you know, if you ever heard that it has a real cell count problem um, and you say, well, let's get rid of all the cows over 200,000, you may get rid of most of your herd. Uh, but if you're using PC DART, you can uh, look at different cows at, at different levels. So you're not uh, looking at, you know, 60% of the herd. You may be focusing on, you know, the top uh, 10 or 15% to see there's a problem with that. Um, but if for, for this report, and that's kind of uh, consistent throughout the industry as far as um, what's considered as an infection or not infection. And we'll look at, uh, on our next uh, report, um, some way to look at um, suspects as opposed to infected animals. So here again, I wanna check and see the difference between first lactation cows and older cows. Um, if there is, you can, uh, are there other areas to reevaluate? Are there a high percent of cures? Um, if there is a high percent of cures, then that means that your uh, treatment's working. Um, is there a high incidence of new cases? Um, so if, there, if you have a high uh, problem with, with new cases and you're curing them that right, right away, um, so you may want to check and see what type of uh, you know, do some uh, culture of the, of the mastitis and see what kind it is um, to see if there's some way to uh, prevent that from constantly happening. New cases, but you're curing, but you keep on getting new, new cases all the time. So um, this is where you're just gonna wanna look and see uh, if, where those problems may, may occur at. Then we wanna move to our repro section. So, um, and here we're looking at a little different time frame, um, not just the first 40 days, of course. So notice this graph displays different cabin groups and this information is not available until 30 days after your volunteer wedding period. So that's why it's very critical to make sure that you are using and, and have submitted the correct volunteer waiting period. This particular herd has volunteer waiting period of 50 days. Um, if for some reason, um, you know, that's wrong, then expect some of this other information is also going to be wrong. So if your volunteer wait period is actually 70 days, um, then, and you show that it's 50, you're already 20 days um, behind the eight ball. So just make sure your volunteer waiting period is, is set appropriately. Um, if it is, then you want to see if there's any seasonality. Here we see that back in October, November, a year ago, um, we were not getting those cows bred. Um, and then things have uh, changed uh, drastically after that. Uh, our herd on a full-time AI uh, should display 100% for all cabin groups. Because if you're a full-time AI, then basically every cow should be bred um, within seven days of your uh, volunteer waiting period. So uh, in those cases, you know, you shouldn't see a problem with this here. Um, but if you're not, then, uh, then you're kind of checking to see what your, your heat detection is, and maybe you should. Um, it could be that they weren't a year ago, and they are now. Um, so that might be um, some reason why um, the, dr the drastic improvement. So, and then the uh, um, chart down below, we just kind of look and see how many animals are in each of those uh, groupings. Survival. Um, so what we're looking here are cows surviving to 60 days of milk. Um, excessive fresh cow calling is an indicator of poor transition and can be financially devastating. So we wanna check and see uh, what is our survival uh, if there's any differences between lactations, looks like they were doing a little heavier calling uh, during the summer and uh, early fall. Things have definitely improved uh, more recently. Um, so whatever happened uh, there, um, and you can go back and see, well, was it a cell count problem? Um, you know, look at those previous graphs and see, well, well maybe that's what they, uh, the reason that things were being called. Um, so this is where we're just kind of checking to see what is our uh, calling in the first 60 days. 
So you also want to review the level of deaths to see if a high percentage of the cows are dying in the first 60 days in milk. Um, if there is, then that definitely is a uh, cause for alarm. Um, so once again, the level of death is definitely an important indicator of how well the transition period is managed. And you want to see if there's any difference between lactation groups. Um, so as we kind of see here, uh, those cows that left, uh, we indicate that May, June through August, looks like we were calling 22% uh, of the lactation one cows uh, were called in the first 60 days in July and August. Um, and then things have leveled off since then. Um, looks like we did have some uh, high, um, high percentage of cows dying um, during some time per period, but lately that doesn't seem to be a problem, which is good. Can you give us the difference between cows left and, and dying? Cows left is management decision. We wanted her out of the herd. Yeah, yeah. Whether she was uh, called for a repro or cell count or um, some other uh, problem, um, uh, but she she was called from from the herd um, as opposed to dying. Is obviously they they died in the first sixty days. The stress cows. So what we're looking here is the stress cows during the transition period are at risk for less than optimum performance when they leave the fresh cow program. And you wanna see if there's any differences between lactations and how does the herd compare to the top 10%. So similar to our, our, our survival that we saw before, um, you know, if we noticed this before, uh, things were kind of low during the, the summer and things haven't improved now. And we're also looking at our stress. Um, the last summer, we were seeing more uh, cows stressed, um, not as much of a problem as we're seeing them now. So those cows that were stressed in May and June seem to probably also were, were, were called later on. Um, most of our problem here seems to be with our older cows. Lactation one cows seems to be okay. And when we're looking at the stress, we're, these are their, what we consider as our stress factors. High cell count, calving ease of three to five, or any stillbirths, having twins, abortions, and then for our older cows, um, abnormal dry periods. Uh, those with less than 30, or greater than, than 70 days uh, for a dry period. So multiple stressors can definitely compound problems and cause cows to fail during the lactation. Do you wanna see if there's any differences between lactations and, and what stress uh, factor is the most uh, problem uh, for the herd? Um, as we kind of look at the first lactation uh, cows, uh, as expected, uh, sow count, is going to be our biggest problem. And we looked at uh, and that was uh, a year ago and definitely has improved since then. Once we looked at our older cows, um, we're seeing that the abnormal dry periods were a problem a year ago. And that has definitely improved since then, as well as, as our percent of cows not stressed has definitely improved as well. So this herd is definitely going the, the, the right direction um, as far as those stress factors go. So fresh cows with low milk or high cell count, um, we, at the end of this report, we are looking at cows that were just fresh in the last 40 days. Um, kind of if we went back to that uh, area that uh, had low milk that, um, Fred pointed out, these would be cows that would kind of fall into the, that category. Um, so the low milk or high sow count is, is highlighted. So these are the cows that are distressed and might need some uh, additional TLC um, before they do become a, a full call candidate. Um, so it just kind of brings up that uh, um, th those cows uh, uh, that definitely need to be looked at or, 
or maybe they will before they are a full uh, call candidate. And, and we just kind of uh, highlight that uh, in yellow are some other stress factors that may add to it. And we see in here, we have uh, two that were um, have a long dry period. So, so to go through there, um, you as you go through there, you want to mark the areas that the herd excels. Um, are there any certain management monitors that have room for improvement? Are there any common threads uh, between those uh, areas that need improvement? And then review the list with your management team and determine what areas may be most detrimental or may have the highest economic impact and focus on that monitor. Um, if you go through those, also point out to your team um, those areas that you did excel in. Um, and make sure you reward them accordingly. So. <clears throat> okay, so that is our transition cow report. Um, it's one that um, is a very popular report, especially once people get it and if they are having any transition cow problems. So it's one that can really bring your attention to it. Because we have a small group uh, folks, if you have a question, just go ahead and unmute and share the question with us. Okay, the next one that we're going to cover is our utter health monitor. And this thing can go along with the transition cow, if you, especially if you're going through the transition cow and you see cell count is the problem, is the biggest problem. Um, getting the utter health monitor can help you kind of find out where that cell count problem really does exist. So as we know, mastitis can be caused by many factors related to environmental or contagious bacteria. It can have less than optimal milking procedures, poor hygiene of facilities, poor hygiene of the cattle. And as we know, mastitis can cause large economic losses reduced milk production, discarded milk, lower repro performance, and excessive herd turnover. Cows with less than 100,000 cell, 100, cell count are considered healthy. Levels of 200,000 plus are typically indicated as an utter infection. And we're also gonna be looking at values between 100,000 and up to that 200,000 level. And we're gonna call those suspects and reviews cows that are not optimally healthy. We're also gonna provide you how the top herds are doing. The other health monitor defines the top 20% herds using each herd's weighted average cell count. Average performance is similar across all herd sizes, but for smaller herds have high infection rates larger than larger herds, we found that out. So we're gonna, once again, uh, categorize um, herds by one to 199 cows, 200 to, a, to 999 and 1,000 plus. So as we do those comparisons with the top 20%. So the current infection in your cohort group, so you determine your infection rate for the herd. So if we look at the graph down below, um, the infection rate is almost 20% infected. And what percentile does the herd fall in regards to, to the current infection? So we wanna look at that um, red uh, vertical line and see that the, this herd falls about the, oh, 68 percentile. Um, and as far as infection goes, um, the top 20%, uh, will we'll be quite a bit lower. So it would be, um, as you just kind of see there. SEC averages. In 2010, some processors started reporting a, a three month rolling geometric cell count average. Um, and we're kind of based upon the EU's legal limit of 400,000. So we do provide that three day, a three test day geometric average. Um, so then that can kind of reduce the impact of one, set, one test being really bad. 
current SEC infection rates. So uh, we kind of broke this out for what's going on currently in the herd. Um, so you wanna see which is your best group of cows and which cows need to have the, have the most concern and how does those groups compare to the top 20%. So we have the milking group. So what we have here, what percent uh, is infected? So in this herd, about 20% of the herd is infected. On um, first lactation cows are about 12%. Second lactation cows are higher, third lactation cows. And then we have new infections, chronic infections, infected three or more times, fresh cows inf infections, fresh first lactation. So you can kind of compare those to the older cows and um, right at dry off time. So kind of kind of see where you're at, where's and is right now I would say, um, you can say that the um, second plus lactation or second lactation cows are probably um, our main concern. And then also look at the fresh cows. That's where some of the problems are compared to the other groups and also compared to the top 20%. So current cell count by lactation, you wanna look for the best group of cows, determine the group of cows that appear to be of most concern and high percentage of suspect that infected could be cause of what is coming in the future. And how does the herd compare to the top 20%? So you want to have that uh, normal or green bar be as high as you possibly can. And you want that to be above the uh, purple line, which is your top 20%. Um, so that's where the uh, percent of uh, normal or non-infected cows are. As we mentioned, um, your uh, suspect, or if you happen to see that right now, you've got a high suspect. Uh, kind of get on that right away before those suspects turn into infections. So we also broke this down by stage of lactation to see where our infections are, what stage that they're, they're happening. And as we kind of see here, our fresh uh, cows are our biggest problem on, on this particular case. Want to see where that uh, stage of lactation are, are the problems because that's where the most separation is between uh, where they're at percent uh, normal uh, compared to the top 20%. So current SCC by lactation, stage of lactation and level. So we've got some of that same information. We've got it in a table format here. Uh, tells us the information as for current as well as previous test information. Uh, a majority of the infected cows shall fall in the moderate category and not the severe. So we've got looking at our current tests, we've got, we want it, your majority to obviously be in the normal, but if you do want to ha have an infections, you want them to be in the moderate infection um, and not the severe infection. So we also can see where we're at as far as previous tests and hopefully, um, we're not, in this case, our total infections, a percent of the herd um, isn't higher than what they were for the previous tests. Uh, this particular case, we are seeing that it is. So um, definitely going the wrong direction and want to make sure you get on top of that before that tends to be um, a, a continual problem. Changes in infection rates over time. And so you want to see if there's, does this appear to be any seasonality or changes from what was seen for the current test and has the infection rate on the fresh cows changed? So that's kind of where you, we saw that our fresh cows were kind of our problem. And we kind of look at this and see, okay, where's our first lactation fresh cows? Looks like they were, um, infection was the highest during the summer. Um, for both uh, first lactation as well as our, our older cows. And then they did drop, drop down. 
our chronics just kind of were kind of steady. New infections were kind of steady as well, but do kind of notice that um, our infections do increase more during the summer than the rest of the year. This table here um, gives that same information for the past year, and it will go um, back a year's worth. So if you do tests uh, monthly, then you can have 12, month, 12 uh, test dates listed here. And so use the table to determine if there are enough numbers to draw conclusions in the graph that we previously had. So if you happen to see a spike, you can go in here to see, well, there was only two cows that were fresh during that time frame. So I'm not really going to worry about it. Um, so that's not a, a trend. Uh, so this kind of helps you uh, look and see if you get valid numbers to draw any, any major conclusions on. Especially when we're looking at first lactation fresh infections, you know, we've only got some cases two or three animals in there. So just kind of be aware of that. Changes in weighted average and our rolling three tests geometric average. Here again, um, we're looking at the last three tests, kind of see if there's any seasonality and where the herd is for the top 20%. So um, once again, we're seeing continuously here, our summer is our, our problem. Changes in cell count status. So what we're looking here, uh, we've broken the herd up. It's a scatter plot, um, four different quadrants, similar to what you can do in PC Dart. And uh, so, in the lower left are our non-infected cows. So those cows that were previously below four and currently below four. Immediately to the right of that are our cures. So those are cows that were previously above four or two hundred thousand on their last test, and now they're below that level. So those are our cures. Directly above that are our chronic cows. So those are cows that were above four last test and this test. And so those are our chronics. And then to the left of that are new infections. So cows that were good last test, um, but are now um, infected. So those would be our new infections. You can also kind of see, depend upon the number of cows in the herd, if there's any trend by lactation groups, kind of to see that there are uh, more blue triangles in the chronics than we are seeing um, first lactation cows. So that kind of, kind of, kind of gives you a little bit of that. Um, herd sites can make this really busy or it, it can be helpful. 20 to determine what percent of the herd is not infected compared to the top 20%. So we're looking at that same information. And we're gonna review the cure rate for the dry cows, determine if the dry treatment is working. So we have previous to current test and we have last dry off to fresh. So we're looking at those uh, um, to see what actually is happening. Um, and this particular herd, kind of see that the, uh, compared to the top 20%, uh, the number not infected is at 56%. Top 20% of the herds are at 90%. So definitely is a, a problem as far as overall infections goes. Um, so when we look at the net transmission rate, we are dividing the new infections by cures, okay? So we're looking at the number of new infections Dividing that by the number of cures. A number less than 100 shows progress and um, that the herd's going in the right direction. So if we're looking at the previous to current test, our net transmission rate is 148. That is above 100. So they are going the wrong direction. In other words, they're getting more infections, more newer infections then they actually are seeing cures, okay? When we're looking at our last dry off to our fresh uh, cases, our net transmission rate is at 38, which is really good. 
Um, as we see here, we had um, 87 cures to only 33 new infections. So this would definitely show that our dry cow treatment is, is working. Um, so this is kind of a, a way to actually evaluate that. Okay, then we look at the cure rate for cell count. Um, so this is the similar information, but it's spread over time. So you wanna review the cure rate for the fresh cows compared to the top 20% as well um, as the previous and current. So if we're looking at this, um, as we do see the light green um, area, which is our previous to current test, um, we are seeing that uh, we're seeing less cures uh, in the most recent test than we had before, and a different, definitely a different uh, separation from the top 20%. So the last dry off to fresh um, cases, we're looking at the uh, orange compared to the light purple. Um, that kind of looks like it uh, was doing really well. And then during the winter, um, there were some problems, but we're, ready, we're heading back to uh, a much better uh, place now than we were um, this last fall and winter. Okay, so the next, uh, we have a chart of cows to treat or watch. So these are just our first lactation cows. So these are cows that weren't infected this test or were infected on the last test or prior test. The 30-day milk loss is a prediction of the amount of milk to be lost in the next 30 days if they stay at this level of cell count. So, and this report can also be used to re review as a list of uh, possible call candidates. Okay, so if we're looking at this report here, um, we have some information about the animals. Um, the first few are chronic cows, uh, words they were infected last month, a uh, last test as well as this test. You can kind of see what their lactation average um, is. So definitely um, the first th three cows would be strong possible candidates um, with having 75 to 100 percent of their uh, tests uh, be infected. Um, we can also kind of see that they were infected early and their 30-day um, milk loss is going to be over 100 pounds or close to it. And those first three cows are either not bred or were just recently bred. So definitely strong uh, uh, candidates for the uh, for calls, um, considering that they're currently uh, just barely bred and or, or not bred at all. Okay, so our next group are our two plus lactation cows. So these are cows that are new infections, this test. Previous lactation cell count average and ME information is also provided. So you kind of see if they were a problem on their prior lactation as well. So you can also use this for uh, cull candidates. So these are all cows that are uh, new infections. Um, this test, you kind of see that um, if we looked at some of the, uh, uh, let's say we looked at third and fourth cow, their previous lactations, they were also um, high, um, especially that 3463. Uh, right now she's uh, averaging uh, really high. She's only just fresh. so. You would kind of uh, watch that. Want to watch that? Notice that she had an infection, uh, had a cell count problem on the uh, last prior lactation as well. So you kind of uh, watch and see what's what's going on. Um, 
with, with that cow. Our next report are cows to call for poor outer health. So cows must be currently infected and infected three or more tests, this lactation and milking less than 50 pounds. So these are definitely, um, so these would be chronics as they were been infected three or more tests during this lactation. Uh, they could be, um, if they have been milking for a long period of time, they could have been cured their prior tests, so they may not be right now a chronic cow, but most cases they probably will be. Um, so we're looking at uh, uh, the first few cows. They've had six tests so far, and um, all of them have been infection. So definitely strong on the possible candidate. The second one especially has a low ME value. And so her previous lactation average was also fairly high, 696,000. So with uh, high cell count, last lactation, low ME, um, this test, as well as last test, um, strong call candidate um, to be regardless if she is pregnant or not, and maybe even better to get rid of her so she doesn't um, repopulate the herd. So you, as you go through this, um, or you wanna review it again, you wanna see if there's any different, definite lactation differences. You wanna see if there's any seasonal differences that can be avoided in the future. If you had a problem last summer, Make sure you don't have that same problem this summer. Um, are there any common threads between the areas that uh, we've looked at? And then here again, review this report with your management team, determine what area uh, may have the highest economic impact, and then focus on that monitor. And so then you can go ahead and, and make sure your problems don't happen again and try to take care of those uh, cell count problems. Okay, that concludes those two reports. Uh, if anybody has any questions um, or want to review anything, please feel free to let me know. I don't see anybody kicking off their mute and I'll pick your brain on two relationships. When we were looking at the extended dry periods and then we moved into the, the health issues, would it be safe to say that in this particular herd, those cows that weren't getting bred are problem cows for us? Oh, definitely. I mean, what I would do is I would, um, especially if you happen to, a look at the, if you had some uh, cell count problems, cows, if you can isolate, see the, who those cell count problems were and see if that also related to uh, the problem breeders. And then, which, you know, it can all uh, um, trickle down. Those problem breeders then may have extended lactations, which then may have longer dry periods, which then may have, um, you know, fat cow syndrome, and then the next lactation have um, fat protein ratios out of whack. So um, a lot of times cell count may be uh, the initial instigator, which can cause a trickle down to repro and everything else. So um, definitely I would um, do some further drill down to see what cows fall in that category and then see, did they have a cell count problem uh, when they first uh, calved? I'm not seeing any questions in the chat room and nobody's turning their mics on. Uh, any other comments, Greg? Nope, just that uh, I said these reports are available to any producer. 
they can request them on, on test day. And anybody that's on the um, uh, webinar today can use our reports on demand with their account. And if they are working with a herd that they know has transition cow uh, problems, um, they can use reports on demand and, and pull a report off uh, for any herd that, that they want. So. Very good. Thank you very much, Greg. Um, if you scroll to the top of your uh, chat box, you'll see that we have the uh, Qualtrics evaluation. Uh, we'd very much appreciate it if you would go ahead and click on that and uh, give us some idea of, uh, you know, what the program uh, information has been for you. Uh, we do this every month. Uh, it's the third Wednesday of each month, barring any holidays that may move it a week forward or back. Uh, so, Greg, thank you very much for taking the time to work with us. Uh, thank the folks who have attended and listened to the program. Uh, it has been recorded and will be up on the uh, Iowa State Dairy Team website uh, probably by the end of the week. Say, Fred, do you mind trying to drop that link again in the chat box for that Qualtrics? I don't happen to see it. Okay, sure can. Otherwise, yeah, thanks, Greg. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be part of your group. There we go. You should be seeing it in the chat box. Very good. Okay, again, thank you, everybody. And uh, I'm turning the recording on.